Want a party? An industry is any system of jobs and companies that is centrally located, draws from a designated talent pool, and eats its young. In this way, American industry is very much like an overstocked guppy tank. Thank you, John D. Rockefeller. At a functional level, all industries are pretty much the same. You can change the product, city, names, and positions, but essentially they all operate the same way. Perhaps the most important of these common features is the industry party. Pomona, and you're our guy. Thank you, sir. You won't regret this. I'll represent us with skill and dignity. I can't believe you got the Pomona conference. Talent, baby. You jealous? Hey, you just make sure you have enough business cards. I think you're running low. Yeah, well, actually, I'm just looking forward to seeing some old buddies I have from school in L.A. Oh, God, the last time we were together? In Sasquatch. Oh, shut up, you pussy. I'm drinking on your student loan tonight, bitch. Oh! <laughs> that was my table! Run! This is the greatest night of all time. Well, congratulations. Oh, muddy. She moves my stuff. Thank you. Thank you. So to aid you in navigating that most perilous of social and occupational jungles, I offer you, my loyal reader, this. The Connor Williams Pocket Guide to Industry Parties. Brian motherfucking Collins. <laughs> Great to see you, man. Mutual. So quick note about the format. This is a pocket gun. It's small, so you can carry it with you for quick reference. And as such, we will only have room for one industry in our examples. Now, seeing as how your dedicated author is visiting friends in Los Angeles, that example will be Hollywood. So how the hell is Hollywood? Well, 24 hours in LA is one day closer to falling into the ocean. How's, uh, what the hell's it you do anyways? You know, you know, being stolen from by the rich and staying poor. They got me in the development department. So general concepts will hold true for all industries, but specific names and phrases will change from industry to industry. For example, what they call pages in DC would be called PAs in Hollywood, and what they call producers in Nashville would be called directors in Hollywood, while producers on Wall Street would be called lobbyists in DC and agents in Hollywood. But agents in DC are completely different, and lobbyists in Hollywood are just dormant. Can I take your bag, sir? However, many specific phrases are consistent. Now, some of these phrases that hold pretty much true for every industry are talent, investment capital, market, release date, going public, Satan, fucked in the ass, and coke dealer. Here you are, Mr. Williams. Hey, what could be better? I'm in Hollywood. Oh, I'm looking at the damn Hollywood sign right now. No, it's a premiere of a W.D. Richter film. How do you know about a premiere? Well, why do you have a copy of Variety? Do you have the new uh, Sports Illustrated around here? We have the Hollywood Reporter. Sporting News? Variety. New York Times? Backstage West. Okay. Uh, Prez would be the only one I could think of, but... Press? I have to see Press. That's perfect, perfect. Listen, he's our first degree. Call me back when you have details, okay? With just the people you know and two phone calls, you should be able to get into any party. It works like this. The average Hollywoodite knows 100 people. You, as a lowly dreg, probably know only 50. But each one of those people know 100 people. So that's 5,000 people. But you assume that about half of those are repeats, so it's more like 2,500. Hollywood, like most industries, is actually not that big of a pool. So you should be able to call someone who knows someone and get on the list. Two degrees of separation. No, yeah, that's right. No, that's fine. No, that'll work fine. Come on, man. Yeah, no, they couldn't believe they fucking come. I mean, he worked in a fuck. If we add a third degree, adjust for overlap, your pool goes up to 125,000. That's the population of Boise. So a call to a call gets you on any list in Hollywood. And a call to a call to a call gets you anyone in Boise. But fuck Boise. Who'd you get? Who'd you get? I'll show you mine if you show me yours. The bigger events in Hollywood, they don't even use a list. They just send out passes. 
so they don't really care if you are actually who you say you are. And this is because the entire publicity and PR industry is made up of those women and gay men whose greatest fear growing up was that the cheerleading squad would not get to their party before their brother's friends drank all the beer and the Chex Mix went stale, thus ruining their reputations forever. The only difference now being that they get paid a lot of money to worry about it. Boys, it's time to shine. Open bar. Always exploit an open bar. It's like graciously accepting a gift. To not drink an open bar dry and make a complete ass of yourself is actually considered an insult to your host in many Asian countries. Mm. Oh. Ah. oh, wow. Mm. That paint thinner tasted just like oh. tequila. Oh, come on, boys. Even a good liver needs a little spanking every now and then. So what the fuck you been up to? Ah, just building a better tomorrow out of glitter and popsicle sticks. Well, used to that. Why are you wearing a tux? It's a power suit. You know, I'm not afraid to be noticed. The evolution of a power tie, really. Well, that's bold. Yeah, look good, feel good. But you look like an ass. But I feel good. Establishing your vantage point is important. Now, the normal human has about a 60 degree wide view. So with two friends in a semicircle, you can cover a full 180 degrees. All you have to do is make sure to keep your back to a wall, which, as we've learned from Westerns, you should be doing anyway. Opportunity is a bandit with a price on his head. Or maybe it's the law coming for you. Either way, with your back to a wall, your group can keep a lookout over the entire party without ever looking like you're scanning. Yep, I'm telling you, I could have tamed the open range single-handedly if cattle respected a well-cut suit. Funny, I remember being the one attending the theater parties at school when you needed an actress. Now, granted, you're gonna look like a bad Saturday Night Live skit with nobody looking each other in the eye when they speak, but these are the sacrifices we make. We're not in Kansas anymore there, Dorothy. This isn't some art school kegger with a makeout couch on the back porch. Can't believe you're still that naive. I can make a better connection than you at this very party. Are you care to back that up? I'll back that up. Your lunch money for the week. And your Capri Sun. You're on. You'd think this was an isolated incident, but it's really not. In fact, pretty much the entire purpose of every industry party is to see who can make the coolest friend. It's like the first day of second grade. I believe you two haven't grown out of this. It's more about the honor than the money. Well, yeah, no shit, it's not about the money. And honestly, what do you think this is protecting you from? Hmm? I mean, I've gotten rid of cases of the clap with Tylenol that would have gotten through this. It protects him from harsh reality. Oh, Jesus, I wanted to have fun tonight. Oh, we will. I'm gonna have a lot of fun. You'll only enjoy yourself if you win. Oh, don't worry. I'll buy him a drink to cry in. Seriously. You're gonna make me wait until you play out some stupid bet. Yep, no, it's on. And don't forget, if you ever find yourself by yourself at a party like this, cling to the bar. That way nobody can tell if you're a lonely loser or just an alcoholic. Throughout history, there have been those who feed at the top of the tank and those who wait for the fish flakes to sink. The fun of industry social events is that you get to put all of them in the same room. And this leaves you with high pressure areas, where everything else is pushed away from, and low pressure areas, where everything sucks. Now the forecast rarely changes. Invariably, at the beginning of the evening, the high pressure front is located here, by the prime real estate, with the low pressure front relegated to the portable and unprotected areas, while the bar is a swirl of the two. Thank you. Now, as we go into mid-evening, the high pressure front moves across the room, while the low pressure front moves in here. And eventually, at around midnight, the high pressure front dissipates. But in the process, it makes for plenty of storms and precipitation. But I'm being a little grand. And the Connor Williams Pocket Guide to Industry Parties is all about practicality. Two fixtures at any Hollywood event are the Nouveau Rocher and the Actrix. The Nouveau Rocher is that rock star that's just hit it big and everybody thinks is the next big thing. Now they always invite the Nouveau Rocher and it will always show up underdressed to prove how cool he or she is. But whether the Nouveau Rocher buys it all or not changes from one specimen to the next. Hey, have I told you guys how much I actually hate you? No! <laughs> no, really, I mean it. Watch this. <laughs> I love this guy! Yeah. The actress is that actress who is definitely a studio concubine, but still gets press in Rolling Stone. Well, usually, apart from the press, the actress will either be bigger in indie cinema, 
over pimp by her agent, a glorified troublemaker, and related to someone you wouldn't expect. But like counting the gears on a bike, it really isn't what you're paying for, it's just the indicator we use. So these two, like the rest of the high pressure front, will be unapproachable for the low front. Now, ironically, the low front are the only ones who know that the Nouveau Rocher has six albums out before his current MTV hit, and that the actress was the popular girl's friend in some dork teen revenge flick four years earlier. Can I get a gin and tonic? Hey, you're Johnny Huge. Yeah, I am. Why? Well, I saw you open up for Rancid back in 95 at the Fireside Bowl in Chicago. Oh, shit. It was amazing. Yeah. I only remember that because I was so stoked to be playing with Lint from uh, Hop Ivy. Yeah, that, that, that's why I went, man. I'm a huge Hop Ivy fan. Wow, I mean, the only reason we even saw you guys is because my brother fucked up the set times. But it ended up good. I was, uh, I was converted, man. I'm a huge fan ever since. Hey, can I get an autograph? Sure. Do you have a, a pannequin ball? Sure. Asking for an autograph at an industry party is pretty much the worst thing you can do. It's incredibly uncool and it makes you a nuisance. But luckily, this isn't my industry. Well, uh, what's your name anyway? Connor. Well, Connor, you know it's very taboo to ask for autographs at these kinds of parties. Yeah, funny you should mention that. See, I don't actually live in LA. I have no desire to be in the movies, and I, I generally don't care. I mean, the plan was supposed to be to have a gay old time with friends making fun of celebrities, but at some point they got serious, and uh, you yeah. know. Yeah, well, I know the feeling. It's pathetic. Oh, John, you got something yeah. for me to be? Come here. Come on, we're gonna tell everyone you're my drummer. Cool. Apart from the people you want to talk to, they will invariably be the people you don't want to talk to. There are a few ways to deal with this. Hey, this is my drummer, Connor. Hey, nice. Amazing drummer. He used to play drums for Shona Knife. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> Shona nice. Knife? I thought that was like an old girl band. Yeah, I, I developed late. Oh. Hey! First is to amuse yourself at their expense. <laughs> Second is to grease ball your way through with fake compliments and laughs. It's the same reason I'm not directing, I'm not acting, doing any of those silly little careers. Third is to mentally plot the death of the person you can't escape. We thought it was all that, but I just couldn't deal. And this went on as my people and his people, and on and on and on. So then I said to Tom, Tom Cruise that is, Tom hey, and I go way back. Something? Oh, thanks. You know who saved my ass at David Fincher's Halloween party? Nathan oh, Lane saves my ass. So here I am at Fincher's Halloween party with Nathan, Bill, Bill Stevens, you know. The last desperate good. measure is to have someone some save you. Like, the low okay. pressure front so relies on friends and prayers. The high pressure front pays members of the low pressure front to do it. Bill Stevens, refresh. I don't think you want me to. Fuck you and Bill Stevens. If you ever bring him to my set again, I'll feed both of your asses to the transvestites. Oh, God. Come on, gotta introduce you to Johnny Hughes. <laughs> How's it going? Fine. Thanks. Oh, was that guy that you worked on that Fox show named Bill Stevens? Uh, maybe, I don't know. Oh, nothing. It's just I heard Celia talking with their boss about some trip they took to Palm Springs with them. Didn't know if it was the same guy. Small world, though, huh? Hey, I'll catch you later. Always have a drink. Here are three reasons. First, having a drink means you always have something to do with your hands. Or whether you're plotting your next big move, or a chronic masturbator, or are, in fact, just a dimwit. A drink will give you something to concern yourself with and let you look like a J.C. Penney's model holding it, or at the very least, a social alcoholic. Frequently at networking events, you'll find yourself talking to someone who is better than no one, but you'll suspect not as good as someone else. So you don't want to offend them, but you really need to check out a potential move. You want to catch a peek at the people next to you, or scan for escape routes. For this, there is the second reason to have a drink, the point in drink. Luckily, it's rude to drink into someone's face, so you, being a courteous person, will point your drink away to drink. 
here's where you look for escape routes or whatever else. Point your drink to where you want to look and drink. Point and drink. Point and drink. Yeah, I was with Bill Stevens for a month on that shoot. It's funny, by the end of it, they were calling me Little Bill. Always getting on my case about it. But you know what? That's just who I am. And you don't have to be subtle, but it helps make friends. I can't help that. You know, I have all the good stories. This one night, I went to the University of Alabama. That and sharing your pace during craft time. Remember, it's all about making friends. And you know, the passport issues weren't that bad. A similar technique to the point you think is the laugh around. Hey, one of them died because of that chihuahua. This is good for full 180 degree sweeps of the room. But don't forget, the timing is important. And of course, there's the third function of a drink the eject lever function. You'll have to excuse me, I seem to have finished my drink. It's not like it happens in sitcoms. <laughs> and so I tell Bill Stevens, <laughs> this is precious, $10, same as in town. <laughs> oh my God, I seem to finish my drink. Would you, uh, excuse me? Yes, cheers. <laughs> huh? What? Last working for him. Bill's a good UPM. Yeah, Bill's a good guy. Anyone uh, need anything from the bar? No, great. He's not coming back, is he? Nope. Ow, what you the? You dumbass, you're making me look bad. What? What is all this Bill Stevens this and I love Bill Stevens shit? God, do you have any idea how many times I had to go on volume runs because of Bill Stevens? Oh, I'm sorry. Whatever gave you the idea? Anybody wanted to hear about that? When you finally get the balls up to make your move, be sure you aren't going to get pulled away. You won't get a second chance. Oh my god! I feel like I just walked into a Jolly Rancher. My eyes are burning with lemon goodness. Yeah, it'll be the fresh citrus smell of your death, you bastard. Unattended bathrooms are the DMZ of any party. Anything you can do is fair game. And that includes lines of coke, sex with prostitutes. Oh, God. And pulling down air fresheners. Oh, Bill Stevens, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, God, I'm fucking dying Sabotage here. Sabotage is low even for you. I never thought I'd see the day. Ah, oh, get off it. You had no better chance than I did. Well, we'll never know now, will we? <sighs> Guys, this thing's gonna blow or something. Sun Tzu's classic, The Art of War, teaches us to recognize when a siege has run its course and costs more than you could possibly capture. But when what you're having to do, or what you're giving up, becomes worth more than what you hope to gain, it's time to do something. Anyway, that's the story. Yeah. I'm leaving. <laughs> Tomorrow. What time's lunch? One, but it's in Encino. <laughs> the first option is simply to cut your losses. Oh, well, that's just great. The second option is to throw a Hail Mary. Okay. Okay. One hand, winner takes all. Whoever Kylie Waters chooses. Okay, I, I would destroy you, obviously. But let's just look at your plan. Them, us. I mean, who here do you think could actually just waltz up to her and ask her to play along? <clears throat> I can't. Bizarre, isn't it? In South Beach, the actress is that model who's actually ugly, but no one will admit it. And in publishing, the Nouveau Rocher is that guy who's crossing over from sports, or movies, or some other stupid pursuit, like living with apes for a year.
Yep, eat it young. It's the worst when you're at the bottom of the food chain. But just like how the biggest shark is eventually eaten by crabs when it stops swimming, nature balances itself, even in the ecosystem of an industry park. Allow me to illustrate. At 11 p.m., the average open bar tab for a party like this is around $500. And by midnight, it's around two grand. And at 2 a.m., it's capping out at around seven grand. But around midnight is where the high pressure front craps out, moves on, generally dissipates. But the party goes until two. So the entire back two thirds of the evening are the low pressure front drinking on the high pressure front's tab. The Shao Show Zhu Guang the Toe. Day Wang Tua Shao Lai. Line it up, baby. Hey. Oh, oh, no. I would like to propose a toast okay. to John D. Rockefeller. Yeah, For as long as American industry eats its young, may its young eat American industry. <laughs> Cheers. 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 And I would like. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> I would like to thank everyone who didn't talk to me tonight, because if I were talking to them, I would not be talking to the people that I want to be talking to right now. <laughs> Amen. Love you guys. Cheers. Right. <laughs> In the end, the one thing to remember is that getting ahead is the most important thing, only when you can't enjoy where you're at. <laughs> you big goof. You big o. I'm Mark McBride. I'm the writer, director, etc. of the short that you just watched. Um, I just want to take a moment to tell you guys a quick story. So in 2004, I was working with a couple buddies and we were just banging out short films, having a lot of fun. I had written a feature called the Connor Williams Pocket Guide to, or the Connor Williams Illustrated Guide to Going Out. And just for shits, for one of our projects, we uh, truncated it down, kind of rewrote, same shtick, same character, and it became the Pocket the Connor Williams Pocket Guide to Industry Parties. And it was a, a fun project. And about that time, I got um, scooped away from the record label that I was working at to go work for a yo-yo company and direct and shoot a couple DVDs and some tours and commercials. And then that somehow turned into a job and interactive in a career in websites. And so uh, earlier this year, I decided, you know, things are stable and kind of boring, so I was like, man, I'm going to dust off that old hard drive uh, that had the footage that was just haunting me for all these years, and I'm going to finish that project. And voila, that's what you got. Now, the reason I'm telling you this story is, one, um, we shot that stuff 12 years ago. And I am not in touch with like 75% of the people that you saw. All I had was an old production notebook that had like a line script and some headshots and like scribbles on paper. So um, for everybody that was in it and helped so many years ago, thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry it took so long. I mean, it's, it's been one hell of a decade. Um, and two, if you know anybody, uh, forward this to them, tell them, and see number one. Three... If, um, if you see any corrections in the credits that I can make, please send me an email. You can send it to connorwilliams at popartmogul.com. And four, yeah, if anyone's embarrassed by this or anything, please be patient with them. I mean, we were much younger and, you know, we shot the whole thing in a weekend and change. So hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And thanks to everyone who helped me make it. <laughs>